waiters and waitresses of Reddit, what is the most awkward couple date you have ever witnessed at work? Story 1. I work at a dinner theater and we usually do proposals where we set up a random draw where the winner comes up on the stage to win their prize and are then surprised by their partner who proposes. It's usually sweet and makes everybody in the room all fuzzy and warm. This one guy wanted to take it further and requested to perform a song. He brought his own music and everything. We're pretty easy going at this job, so we agree to let him do it. We do the fake draw. The woman comes up on stage in front of a room of 400 people, and the music starts to play. Apparently, this guy was a little nervous, and he compensated by having a few drinks. So what follows is a slurred performance of a song written by this guy that seemed to focus on how he was sorry for cheating on this woman asterisk with her sister asterisk, and at the end of it, he gets down on one knee and proposes. Usually this gets a round of applause, encouraging the person to say yes, but not after that train wreck of a performance. The poor woman was just holding her face the entire time and starts shaking her head and says, no, what's wrong with you? She storms off and leaves him and our stage manager on stage to a bunch of murmuring from the audience. The only thing our stage manager can think of to say on mic is, well, that's that. The guy ended up staying for the rest of the show and had many more drinks. That was years ago, and it still remains one of the cringiest things I've ever seen. Story 2. They came in, and the first thing I noticed is that the woman was noticeably older than the man, but I don't really judge about that kind of thing, and I also don't assume people are on dates. Maybe she is his aunt, or they're just friends. So I went to go ask about drinks and do the usual peppy greeting, and she is super chatty. Bashily talks for him and answers questions that were straight for him. Okay, I think maybe that's just how they are, whatever. She proceeds to order them both hard alcohol straight at 10 a.m. I figure, hey, maybe they are on a vacation together. You never know. It finally hit me that something wasn't right was when she wouldn't stop making close relationship comments about the two, which is how I knew it was kind of a date. I am talking straight up things like, I am 53, but with the amount of work I have had done to my downstairs. He won't be able to tell tonight if I'm actually 23 inches, I'm watching the man's face and he looks pained. I watch the table from afar. I realize it kind of looks like a date gone wrong. But they seem to know each other, so I'm not really sure what is going on. And servers always chat and theorize about their customers in their free time. When the man gets up and comes over to me and asks me to chat with him around the corner really discreetly. So I do. He looks as me and is talking super fast as he explains that this is his boss. And he has to meet with her quarterly and she just has to sign a single form to approve what he has been doing. And she insists on going out for a meal and drinking and then trying to sleep with him. Every time. I was horrified for him. He looked that panicked. He said that he usually gets her to sign it before they leave the restaurant and then makes an excuse to ditch her. We made a code sign, him patting the back of his head three times, so that I could intervene when she would get far too inappropriate. But honestly, she didn't change much when I would come. He also asked me to bring him fake alcoholic beverages, said I could charge him for the alcohol but to make them water or just soda. I still think about him sometimes and wish I had gotten his name or something so I could check in and encourage him to report her. But in all honesty, she probably owned the comedy he worked for or something, the way she spent money and looked like. Story 3. Couple came into the restaurant dressed very goth. I wasn't their server, but I was running the cash register just a few feet away. They proclaimed to everyone that they were energy vampires, but not to fear them because they won't hurt us. They said they didn't need our food for sustenance, but enjoyed the tasted. After ordering the meal, they then politely asked the waitress if she would stick around for a second so they could feed off of her aura so they could have enough energy for the night. The waitress said okay and gave me a side glance over her shoulder that I knew meant, I better get a good tip for this. The couple clasped each other's hands, closed their eyes, and made sucking sounds for a solid minute before leaning back in the seats and sighing as if they had just had a turkey dinner. The waitress was indeed tipped well for her delicious energy. Story 4. When I was bartending, this guy came into the bar on a weeknight, average-looking guy, late 20s. He sat down and asked for a drink, and told me he was nervous because it was his first date in three years and they had met on Tinder. He arrived 20 minutes before her expected arrival to get rid of some of his nerves. Two hours passed, and he waited for her with no text or call explaining she would be late. This woman walks in, walks up to the guy, and I'm thinking, wow, she really came. She looks at him and says, are you Joe? The guy replies yes and gets up to properly greet her looking incredibly excited. She says, no thanks, and just leaves. What a foul creature. Joe, not his real name, and I proceeded to get way too drunk for a Tuesday. Poor average Joe. Story 5. I worked at a fondue place. 1.5, two-hour meal for two people. Four courses, the works. Couple came in, and he had pre-arranged with us to present an engagement ring with the chocolate course, with melted chocolate on the plate spelling, Will you marry me? Also roses and other embellishments on the plate. 
apparently the entire meal she was explaining to him how bad he was at being in a relationship. Too needy, too emotional, somehow also didn't spend enough time with her and wasn't connecting with her. It was an hour-long breakup speech. We come around the corner with candles lit and the chocolate fondue and the engagement ring on the plate. The table next to them did everything they could to wave us off. I was holding a camera to capture the magical moment, which never came. He tried to get his prepared remarks out, but it was so bad we eventually left the dessert at the table and tried to act like nothing had happened. She left before the check came. Story 6. One of my first jobs in New York was managing a lounge cocktail bar in a high-end hotel. At around 3 or 4 o'clock, a guy that looked pretty cheesy, slicked back hair, bad suit, etc., came up to me and demanded that he get asterisk that asterisk window table tonight for his date. He had a reservation for 8 p.m. I explained to him that I can't guarantee it, etc., etc., and he slipped me $400 with the how about now look in which I eventually caved in and told him that I'd take care of it. He then pulled another stack of hundreds and started counting them in front of me while asking if I could go a little extra by coming over to the table when he was there with the date and pretend that I knew him from a movie. At this point, if I've gone this far, why not? Sure enough, he rolled around later in the evening with a blonde bimbo. And after they'd had a glass of champagne, I approached the tables around them, checked on how they were doing before going over to him, and did the whole, how are you enjoying your evening? And before walking off, I did an Oscar-worthy double take with a, are, are you, by any chance, you must be, at which point, he had this doshy smile lapping up the recognition he was getting from this young dude he'd just paid off. Most importantly for him, though, it worked. She was loving it. And they left shortly after, and he slipped me another dollar six hundred on the way out. Story 7. Was a cocktail waitress at a bar in a high-end restaurant a couple years ago. This couple comes in right around peak hours. Guy looks annoyed. Girl looks really excited. The whole time the girl is trying to talk to this guy, and he's completely ignoring her. He gets a call and talks on the phone for a good ten minutes, hangs up and starts talking to anyone around him but her. He's getting more and more drunk and starts hitting on the female bartender, and eventually the cocktail waitresses, myself included, telling us he could get us all much better jobs in Atlanta. The girl he's on a date with has started crying at this point, and once he actually notices, he yells at the bartender because it was obviously restaurant's fault for her being upset. She yells at him to stop yelling at the bartender because he's been such an awful date, and he goes off. Tells her he didn't even want to eat here, she should have picked a better place, and he isn't paying for her food and drinks. He then tells her that she didn't look fat in her picture, and he wouldn't have asked her out if he'd known she was that big. Probably met online kind of thing. She retreats to the bathroom, and the guy continues to make a scene. Another girl at the bar and I go to check on her while the bartenders and manager try to deal with him. The girl is super upset, and I tell her there's a back door she can leave through, and I can get her tab from the bartender. I go back out, and the guy had already stormed out and refused to pay, leaving his date with a nearly $1.200 check. She didn't have the money to pay, so a couple of the bar regulars covered it. Made the whole night super awkward and stressful. Definitely one of the more memorable experiences of that place. Story 8. In law school, I always worked the Sunday morning shift at the restaurant in town, and it was always so dead. But I'd bring homework, so it was mostly okay. Every other week, this couple would come in and order GTs and nachos and sit for hours talking about how attracted they were to each other, their close relationship life, and would joke about sneaking around and whatnot. I never thought much of it. Until one day I walked into the dining room from the kitchen and saw the lady had already been seated in a booth facing me. Her dude's bald head was across from her, facing away from me. I approached the table, about to ask the lovebirds if they wanted their usual, when the dude turned around and it was a different dude. The lady looked at me sheepishly as he mentioned to me it was his wife's birthday, and they had never been at my restaurant before Lamau. Story 9 I was at one of these fancy speakeasy type bars they've started opening up installing a new invoice printer for their point-of-sale system. Waiting for the printer firmware and driver to install can take 30 or 40 minutes on slower computers, so I'm people watching. As I'm standing there watching bars fill up, I notice a gorgeous blonde in her late 20s is sitting with a very well-manicured-looking guy in his mid-40s. He's dressed like he just left a high-dollar law firm, and she looks like she's going to a fancy professional cocktail party after their date. He is polite, talkative, and super into her, but you can tell that she isn't reciprocating the feelings. To be honest, by the look on her face, she's anywhere but in that bar at the moment. The guy goes to the bathroom and she quickly picks up her phone and frantically calls someone and begs for pickup ASAP. The gist of the call was the guy was her mother's co-worker and her mother had set the date up and our girl really wasn't feeling it. About 15 minutes later, a guy around her age comes in, throws some cash on the table and excuses them. She cites some vague emergency and is escorted out. 
The older guy continues drinking. $140 tab, note that I'm standing at their main cash register, and starts flirting with the waitress, fails to get her number, pays an exact change without tipping, and leaves. Story 10. When I was waitressing in college, I witnessed the single most embarrassing thing to happen to a person to date. Right in the middle of their dinner, and in the middle of our Friday night dinner rush, this poor guy stands up, taps his wine glass to get everyone's attention, and then proceeds to tell everyone what a fantastic person his GF is, how much he loves her, and how lucky he is to have her in his life. The whole time this is happening, she is just sitting there watching him with the most boring look on her face. It was so weird. Kind of like, yeah, tell me something I don't know. Then poor guy pulls out a ring, gets on one knee, and asks her to marry him. She gives him the most disgusted look imaginable and says, This is the ring you expect me to say yes to? Are you retarded? Could you be any cheaper? Then she gets up and walks out, leaving the poor guy just kneeling there. I didn't charge him for the meal. Edit. Just to clarify, this was a real rejection. Not only had they not even finished their meal when he proposed, a hostess at the restaurant knew the guy personally. Apparently, it took him a really long time to get over it. Story 11. I had a middle-aged couple who seemed perfectly nice. The man asked me where he could go to breathe. I pointed him in the right direction and then started heading back to the kitchen, which was in the same direction. He followed me and told me that the woman with him was his ex-wife. Not knowing how to respond, I said it was nice that they got along so well. He told me she just pretended to seem nice and was actually a terrible person. I was feeling uncomfortable enough, but then he started to ask my age if I had a boyfriend, what I was doing later. Thankfully, I could excuse myself to the kitchen. However, serving that table was awkward after that, especially since she kept touching and complimenting him. Story 12. This wasn't a romantic couple, but it was a father and his daughter. I thought everything was going fine, but I could tell I was intruding in on times that they wanted to be alone, so I tried to adapt and stay out of their way. I don't know what happened, but suddenly the daughter begins to cry, and I had no idea until I approached and asked how everything was. Immediately, he looked annoyed, which was understandable, and I just left and didn't talk to them for the remainder of their meal, including when I dropped off their food and got them the check. She cried the whole meal and it was a very emotional scene, and I'm not entirely sure what had happened except maybe a divorce or a death in the family. Story 13. A woman in her 50s and a guy in his late 20s slash 30s. He was wearing a graphic, gory, happy tree friends shirt, and she was in a full fur black coat with a mesh shirt underneath. Straight up gothic Cruella de Vil. They didn't speak a word to each other, except when I came to ask how their meal was going. And they both started complaining that their wine suddenly tasted of soap, even though they'd had the same bottle and glasses since they sat down. Convenient that they start complaining for a free bottle when they're reaching the end of their old one. Either way, they literally just sat staring at each other and silenced the whole meal, then paid, got up, and left. Seriously the strangest date I'd ever seen, and the most on edge I'd ever felt serving customers. Story 14. Bartending a day shift at an upscale Italian place in a high-end shopping center over the Christmas season. Couple comes in, starts drinking, and is very flirty with each other. They clearly liked the attention. I wasn't quite sure why the man seemed familiar, but he had a face I knew from somewhere. Midway through their lunch, the woman used his name, and it dawned on me that the man was the husband of my previous boss. I told him he looked familiar and asked if he was Mark from that restaurant on the way to the beach. He said that he was not, but the woman he was with insistent on making it awkward and peppered me with questions like, I've heard the owner of that place is crazy, did you know her? She was backhandedly trash-talking Mark's wife, and the whole thing was so uncomfortable. He was an all-around bad dude, though, and deserved it. For additional context, his family had owned that restaurant on the way to the beach, and his wife, my former boss, ran the place until she caught him cheating. They divorced. She got the restaurant and continued to run it with her sister. Fast forward a few years and the two eventually remarry. It was during their second marriage that he turned up at my bar with his mistress. Story 15. There's a habit of some older couples where the elderly gentleman will order on behalf of his wife. I guess it might have been cute and romantic once, but it doesn't work with some younger couples. I was serving a younger couple, early 20s, who seemed pretty early into the relationship. They were ordering drinks and he orders her drink for her. Far from being dazzled by him knowing what she wanted, she didn't want any of it. Well, I'd actually like a latte, not a cola, but fine, whatever. If I don't get a say, he responded quite angrily with, Oh, sorry, have what you want then. She got her latte and he glared at me. They ate and left. Not been in since. I'm sure they're doing well. Story 16. I've told this one here before. I worked in a resort hotel, high end. I waited tables in the fine dining restaurant. It was pretty common for people to propose there, so much so that I had a system for the whole thing. One guy came in and wanted to do the ring and the champagne thing, 
and I talked him into doing a dessert alternative that doesn't result in a sticky ring and champagne on the floor. Anyway, long story short, I bring the ring. She says, Damn it, I've told you before I'm not marrying you. He flips. She's super calm about it and basically treats him like a child having a tantrum, which to his credit, he was not screaming or anything. Just very upset. He left. She ate the flipping dessert. Eventually, he came back and paid and they left together. Super awkward. Story 17. Had a few breakups occur. Those are super awkward. The guy bringing the girl to a public place so she won't cause a scene happens quite often. This one time a guy did this with his girlfriend at lunch. She then starts bawling, I mean wailing, and everyone around is looking in their direction at this point. She then quickly resorts to anger and then starts yelling at him. Tells him to have a great life, you flipping loser, and whatnot. Then proceeds to get out of the booth, and her foot got tangled in her long purse strap, and she falls and slams her head on the back of the booth corner and falls on the floor. She is now really wailing at this point since 20 people in the restaurant watched her do this, and she ends up running out the front door. My coworker goes over to the dude and is like, do you want your check? Since they already ordered, the guy was like, nah, bring me my food still and just box up hers for me. May as well have some lunch. He sat there and ate and didn't seem too bothered by what happened. Just a weird situation. You never know how someone is going to react to a breakup in public. Story 18. Oh man, I've got a few. Higher end place I worked at guy pulls in the lot in a new high end BMW. Flashy guy, chains on, sunglasses inside type. Girl comes in with him. She's classy. He walks to a corner table. She walks past him. Says she wants this booth over here. He's not budging. Says if she wants to eat with him, it's going to be at this table. Well, that doesn't fly well. They end up leaving, he says to me, hold that table. He'll be back in a few. Drops her off somewhere and comes back 20 minutes later and has steak and lobster for one. Other one was at an Irish pub. It's a couple's first date. They are at an outside table getting to know each other. Pleasant conversation seems to be going well. Enter drunk girl. She's plastered. Takes a liking to the guy and decides to go over and join their date. Sits at the table, slurring, he, your cute, proceeds to climb into his lap and try to grind on him. Everyone's watching this slow motion train wreck. He removes her and gently sets her down. Big dude, think he's a bouncer somewhere, and continues playing attention to his date. She won't give up, so he pulls the best move ever. Buys her a shot, she does it, and promptly passes out on the table. They continue their date, completely ignoring the drunk idiot sleeping on their table. Hope they worked out. I'd love to hear them tell their How I Met Your Mother story. Story 19. The majority of my restaurant career, from FOH and BOH, was spent in fine dining. I have seen dozens upon dozens of proposals. I have also seen probably about eight, ten, no, responses from the ladies being proposed to. Almost universally goes like this. Dude gives ring to waiter manager. We already know, based off the reso, that a proposal is in the works. They have dinner. At desert, we bring the ring either in a drink or glass of bubbly or placed on a desert. Overwhelming majority of the time, yes, happens. Everyone rejoices. I've also seen other patrons pay for the happy couple's meal. If there is a no, typically she runs off to the bathroom, cries, dude begs for the check, which is already ready to go. He pays, and they leave almost immediately. Story 20. I waited tables at this restaurant that had a big aquarium in the center. Like floor to ceiling, huge. A mixed age couple comes in, and they're nice, but the guy is super quiet and nervous. Orders a whiskey straight, but you can tell he really doesn't drink. Maybe sipped it twice. His date was probably 20 years younger, and she seemed like she liked to party. She ordered two shots of patron right from the start and took them both. Another younger couple was sat next to them and staring at the aquarium. Part of the deal there was having to talk about the aquarium and fish while people ordered. If I was busy, I'd try to spiel two tables at once with the aqua script, then make a few jokes and fudge off. I got both couples interested and talking, then told them both I would be back. After I dropped the apps for both tables, I see the young girl still talking with the younger table, and they decide to push the tables together and eat. The whole time the older guy is just smiling, but I could tell he doesn't feel comfortable. He barely touched his food and was just a fly on the wall at his own table. Eventually, they decide to take the party outside to do some dancing. During the summer, they give free salsa lessons and people have drinks and dance. Maybe an hour later, I'm taking a breathe break and I spot dude sitting on a bench crying. I walk up to him and give him a cig and try to talk to him. Apparently, his wife passed away about two years ago and that was his first time out since. He said he met that girl on some website and how she reminded him of her, but she's nothing alike in a bunch of really sad stuff. He said the girl left with that couple to go drinking, and she just took off and left him alone. Story 21. So I'm not 100% certain, but one time, I think someone went to the chain I worked at to meet their mail-order brides. It could have been prostitutes, looking back on it, but I thought this at the time. It was two guys in suits that came in seeming really nervous. One comes up to me and lets me know what the girl looks like in case she's confused when she comes in. 
I'd never gotten a heads up like this before and he seemed super nervous slash sketched out. So the women come in and they don't speak very good English and have heavy accents, which stood out in the small neighborhood. They were dressed very minimally for it being cold and raining outside. I point them out to the table with the two men and they're introducing themselves like it's the first time they met with awkward hugs and asking about their flights. I got to overhear some of the stilted conversation and talk of money while passing by. The other time was when an ex of mine came in with his girlfriend, and she left crying for some reason halfway through. Apparently, he brought up that we dated, and he kept looking at me, which somehow caused that whole scene. Story 22. A guy proposed to his girlfriend at the booth across from my friends and me at Olive Garden. When he got down on one knee and opened the box, she was shaking her head and then just stared silently. It must have been a whole 30 seconds of pure silence, but it felt like an eternity. Then the guy proceeded to describe the ring, how much it cost, the different aspects of it, etc. Finally, the girl just went, No! And the guy just sat back down and they tried to finish their dinner. I caught eyes with our server and he made the most perfect, holy hell, that was bad face. Jeez, that was awkward. Edit. I still picture him saying, my love for you is like these breadsticks. Unlimited. He didn't say it, but I still picture it. Edit 2. I really don't think she rejected him because of the location. Obviously, I can't be certain, but she seemed like a nice girl and had this, what are you doing? You hardly even know me expression on her face. Story 23. This was just before Tinder and dating apps were a thing. It was a blind date guy and girl. Guy shows up first and is excited until he sees his date. She had their mutual friend show him an old photo of her because she had since gained significant weight. You can tell he was let down, but decided to make the most of it. They ordered drinks and appetizers. We didn't even get appetizers out before the guy noped out of the date. He sat at the bar asking us to bring the appetizers to him there. Her weight wasn't the only thing he was lied to about. Her personality and his clashed so hard the date didn't last 10 minutes. He hung out well after she left. We, the bar and wait staff, invited him to hang out with us at a bar after work. Ended up being a cool guy. Story 24. Eastern European couple walks in. She looked like she had been crying, but they ordered and seemed nice enough. A few minutes later, I heard a commotion going on in my section. I got there in time to see this man reach over and slap the woman hard enough that the whole lounge heard the sound. He looked like he was gearing up to hit her again, so I instinctively stepped in. I was and am a small, petite woman with no martial arts training or anything, and told him to back off and leave or the cops would be waking him out. Surprisingly, he just left without a fight. What was disturbing is that the woman very quickly composed herself, and by the time I went over to check on her, seconds later, she was brushing it off like it was an everyday event. I guess it was for her. I told her I would feel better if she stayed in the lounge for a bit so we could be sure the man was gone. She agreed and I got her a few drinks on the house. Once she was a little more opened up from the drinks, she told me her story about how this man brought her to the U.S. and that she was afraid if she left him, she would end up being forced to go back home. She also warned me never to date an Eastern European man and that most of them were like that. I wanted to take her to the police or to a women's shelter, but she refused and wandered out into the night. I never saw her again, but I hope she is okay and away from that man. Story 25. I guess a husband and wife is a date. From the last time a similar question was asked. It's been more like 13 or 14 years now. I waited tables at the Olive Garden 10 years ago. Not really messed up up as much as it was funny. A guy and his wife sat down at a table and immediately started arguing. Something about his affair and how a baby from it was costing them money. Finally, it culminated as I was bringing out their salad. As I walked away, I heard the wife say, Well, maybe if you hadn't boned our son's girlfriend and gotten her pregnant, we could afford to eat somewhere nicer than the flipping Olive Garden. Oh, look, the highlight of my meals, unlimited flipping bagged salad. Maybe you could save up and we could go to Joe's Crab Shack for our anniversary. Unpleasant person. Edit. Holy nonsense. This comment has always been my two top rated comments. Now top three but I didn't expect 16K. Well, hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did at the time. Story 26. Not a waiter, but I was working as a supervisor in a restaurant. And there was a drama lasted for a couple of months. There was a couple that came to lunch every day. And every day they went to toilet together for like 20, 30 minutes. So you can guess they had close relationship. It was inappropriate, but we could nothing with that. But one day she came to the restaurant with another man, and he was her husband. And that was a pretty awkward moment. So she started to come to the restaurant with her husband and weekends. But one day, as usually, she came to us with her lover. They were arguing, and as I've understood, they broke up. She was crying and so on. After that fight, I've never seen any of them. Story 27. I'm a bartender and seen a bad date go down. The girl seemed familiar to me, and she kept glancing over at me every now and again. Then the guy started looking over at me, too. Even when she was up ordering drinks, she was glancing at me, and my coworker noticed. 
Turned out she was a friend from years ago who just ghosted our friend group. The couple had no chemistry at all either. There was little conversation, and at a few points both were on their phones at the same time. Eventually the guy leaves and the girl's left there alone for 20 minutes, so she pulls out her laptop and works on Photoshop for a good half hour before leaving. Story 28. Once had a blind date while I was working at an upscale Italian restaurant. The lady came in early, younger, and a little on the heavy side, to put it nicely. She ordered a mixed drink and almost chugged it. She drank it so fast. About 20 minutes goes by, and I'm worried she's going to be stood up. Finally, a guy comes rolling in, in a very quick manner, like he knew he was late. He is tall and fit and doesn't look like he has trouble finding dates. I'm a little worried that he won't find the nice young lady suitable. But boy how I was wrong and a flipping dumbass for think these things. They hit it off, talking and laughing all night. They pretty much closed the place but weren't being rude and staying too late after we closed. They eventually worked their way out the door. And here comes the kicker. I go to take some trash outside to the can and they are sucking each other's faces like there is no tomorrow in the lot propped up on one of their cars. I go inside to share the news with the staff that the date was a success. They were feeling the same way I was about the whole thing. We are all excited too. Figured they went home and shagged it out. Anyway, about 30 minutes goes by and me and the wait staff are leaving through the back door. And what do we see? The flipping car they were kissing at is now fogged the hell up and bouncing up and down in our parking lot. It was the funniest way this night could have ended. Moral of the story, don't put judgments on people's looks and always try to shag on the first date. Story 29. I worked as a cashier at a self-service cafe. The cashier counter is in between two big glass display racks displaying desserts, etc. for sale on either side. I was taking their orders. Mind you, there were more customers behind them when they started fighting on who was going to get the bill. They both started shoving cash at me past the counter when a $20 bill belonging to the girl fell in between the counter and the display rack. It was a really tight spot and neither of us could reach. The display rack is also really heavy and big. She then proceeded to ask me to get a knife and many other random things to get her $20 note. The worst part was the other customers were clearly impatient. Honestly, as a cashier, I've witnessed couples fight for the bill many times, but there's no need to be aggressive, especially when it involves a third party like a cashier. Story 30? My ex-GF with my friend. He didn't know I worked there, but she did. Edit. Sorry, because a few people asked. We were dating at the time. I was young, 15, and she as well, 16. I think she wanted to break up with me. Didn't know how to do it, so did it this. It was hurtful, and obviously I was very sad and angry at the time. But I don't hold any ill will towards her today. I think maturing is a tough path. My friend at the time knew we had been dating, but he was the sort of friend I see twice a week in class, and apparently she told him we had broken up. I don't know, kids do silly things. Story 31. As a waitress, it was probably a tie. One was the time a couple had a rough breakup where both parties wanted to dramatically storm off from an outdoor table. I had to chase them down and run the woman's card as she was crying on the sidewalk because he wouldn't come back to pay the bill. The second was a hotel breakfast restaurant where a drunk conference attendee, who had been coming to breakfast solo and drunk for about three days by this point, came down with a beautiful woman on his arm that I had seen him bring in the night before. I was working a lot of doubles that season. He greeted me in front of a crowd of guests with, Hey, have you met my date? She's a hooker. But isn't she so pretty? I'm trying to convince her she doesn't need to be a hooker. She ate in miserable silence while he told the entire waitstaff over and over about his beautiful hooker date. I gave her a free mimosa. As a customer, though, I know there's a steak and shake waiter from 2013-2014 who witnessed my worst date ever. It lasted a whopping 45 minutes before I had to just leave. Story 32. A couple, luckily not in my section, were clearly on a first date. She ordered a wine and he ordered a beer. The beer was meant to be served in a branded glass, but the only clean ones had just come out the dishwasher. The waitress gave him one of these glasses and it must have warm still. She put the glass on the table and poured about half of the very cold beer into it. Didn't even tilt the glass. This poor guy picked up the glass, but the temperature difference made the bottom of the glass shear off. So his whole glass of beer dropped straight down onto his lap. Obviously, the waitress and manager were all over him trying to help, but they couldn't exactly take his trousers and give him dry ones. So he spent the rest of his date soaked through and stinking of beer. They didn't order starters or desserts, just had a main and left. Story 33. Was a busboy. Used to have a couple come into our small, 30-people cap restaurant. They were both awful people. The woman asterisk always asterisk sent her food back and was loud and stupid, and the guy was a pushy ram. There was a 100% chance they would argue and make everyone around them uncomfortable. They weren't awkward but they always left an awkward tension in the air. Anyway, this one time they were going at all night and the entire wait staff, all three of us, is pissed. I went to clear the table next to them after they finally seemed to settle down 
Then the guy thought it would be completely appropriate to ask, So am I getting that blowjob tonight? Definitely awkward. After they left, we saw the guy standing outside waiting for a cab, so I assumed the answer was no. We were all convinced they were having an affair. Awful people. Story 34. One of the waitresses at a restaurant where I used to work told me this one. I worked in the kitchen. There was a couple, apparently, on a first date. As she would come by with drinks and to take their order, etc., she noticed that they were hardly talking or looking at each other, if at all. The girl was clearly not into it. Finally, when they were finished with their meal, the waitress asked if the ticket would be together or separate. The guy said, together, and the girl said, separate, practically at the same time. Seems like they each had a different experience on this date. It was very cringy to hear. Story 35. I wasn't this table server, but I was able to witness this disaster. I was working at a local Mexican restaurant. This guy came in saying he was going to be meeting a date. She was coming a little later. He asked for a more private spot, which wasn't hard to do. It was like 9 p.m. and we were almost empty. So the server sat them at a small booth in the back room. He was telling her how it was a special date or something. It was a couple weeks before Valentine's Day and we had some candles, so she lit one for them and put it on their table. He had also brought in some roses and a vase for the table. He was showing her this necklace he had bought and was going to give to the woman. So this woman shows up and sees this whole setup and looks super uncomfortable. This guy was trying to physically put the necklace on her, and she refused to take it. It was apparently only their second date, and this woman was freaked out and ended up leaving. Story 36. I was a manager at a restaurant where my then GF, now wife, was a server. One day she came into the kitchen red in the cheeks and flustered. She said, I have to go talk to table 55. I thought it would be a food complaint. But when I arrived, the couple sitting there said, Oh, you must be our server's boyfriend. Which was weird because we normally didn't talk about our relationship at work at least to patrons. We invited our server to a close relationship, and she said no thanks, and that she is in a monogamous relationship, so we thought we would invite you too to make it an orgy. I look over at the BOH door to find my GF busting a gut, knowing the awkward situation she just threw me into. It all sort of felt tongue-in-cheek, but I could tell they were serious. I told them with a half-smile that was not my jam. The man said, well, you can hold the camera if you want. I also politely declined that offer. It turned out both of them were there cheating on their SOs with each other. Story 37. During college, I waited tables in a 100-seat formal kosher restaurant where a lot of Hasidic, ultra-Orthodox Jew, blind-date adult couples would eat. They were so socially awkward, they grow up gender-segregated, that they would often sit all dressed up in their finest while in near silence over their meals. Being an extrovert, I would frequently check on them and intentionally interject something silly or interesting while asking for their next order detail refilling water, bussing plates, in hopes it would give them something new to talk about. Even if it was of them making fun of me during my absence, it often worked, and I got many a better tip from smiling couples to prove it. Story 38. Used to work at a cafe thing that also tried to be a full-service restaurant and jazz venue in the evenings. We were a few doors away from an upscale strip club. One of the regulars there was a guy I'd describe as a pervy English professor, mid-50s, blazer with elbow patches, glasses, gray beard, Anyway, he sometimes came in with one of the dancers, who apparently liked him enough to pay for his meal and drinks on multiple occasions. Then one day she came in with some other dude, I guess who wanted to buy her a drink or something. I'd describe him as paranoid everyone knows guy, sat stiffly upright, was unfriendly to the staff, seemed very uncomfortable, tipped 10 cents. I remembered that detail. On the way out, Professor Guy was at the bar reading the paper. There was such a record scratch moment as introductions were made, that my manager, a textbook on the Spectrum guy, looks at me and goes, well, this certainly looks awkward. Story 39, I had a table once where the woman asked the man if he loved her and he said no. She got up crying and ran into the bathroom. This all happened as I'm stood there with a bowl of nachos for them. I asked him if he wanted me to leave them or bring them back when she came back, and he said he'd just take them and just sat there casually eating his nachos while she cried in the bathroom. She didn't come out for over an hour. She then just sat there sobbing, asking him why he didn't love her, and he just seemed so not bothered by the entire situation. It just got more and more painfully awkward. It was Valentine's Day as well. Story 40. I was pretty busy and approached my newly seated table from an angle that let me see one guest facing me, but only the back of the head of the other. I walked up, welcomed them, and took a drink order. First from the man who had been facing me as I approached. Then I said to the other guy, and for you, sir, he glared at me after I asked my question, but I didn't understand why. As I was getting nervous at the angry silence, the guy who had already ordered said, that's my wife, and then I saw it. Yeah, this could definitely be a woman, with rather masculine features and a short, mannish haircut. I apologized profusely, claiming to have been thrown by the haircut from the back as I walked up. 
Then I realized this wasn't such a great strategy, so I very lamely said, and it looks great on you. She was really angry, but not mortified. I got the very strong sense that this wasn't the first time this had happened, and all embarrassment on her part had long been eroded by mounting anger each time this mistaken gender assumption happened yet again. Then the worst part? The husband used my first name. I hadn't introduced myself. We requested your table, non sequiturist, he spat out angrily, because you were so goddamn asterisk wonderful asterisk to us last time. This wasn't the first time I had seen her. They knew me, and I still mistook her for a man even after taking care of them on some previous night. I had no memory at all of them, not even a shade of deja vu. Good management would have had me give up the table to another server after that, because there was no way to recover from it. Our manager was incompetent, and the couple stayed and ate with me serving them. That was the most painfully awkward hour of my serving career. Story 41. We had a frustrating trend of trashy guests here and there coming in on date night, and acting haughty and pompous in a vain attempt to fit in with what they perceived as the social class standard one or more stations above their own. Mind you, we had guests of all classes seven days a week and they all got the same top-level service. $10 pasta plate split for two? My pleasure. $100 dinner for two with an appetizer and a glass of wine or two each? My pleasure. But the wannabes? They'd act like they knew what they were doing to an awkward degree. I'd we'd indulge them just to keep the flow of service among all the tables. Nothing to gain from calling them out or mocking them. Just smile, serve, and be as professional and helpful as one would be with any table. But trashy folks on an I'm-going-to-impress-you date? Ridiculous. We had a pasta dish that was prepared with two ounces of lobster for flavor-slash-color. It was under $20, enough for two, tasty, and hearty. Visually, it was mostly pasta. The worst was when some trashy dude would ask about the dish. We'd clearly explain the construction and presentation of the dish and answer any questions. We'd serve check back and watch as the poor girl on the date looked like she wanted to crawl out if he owned skin. Why? There's no lobster in this man, he'd proclaim, almost like clockwork. We'd advise again the composition and construction of the dish as well as the menu-stated contents, two ounces, and the expectations. Instead, they'd demand a refire or that they have the dish comped because we had lied or ripped them off. Mind you, our regular guests of all walks of life had no issues, and an understanding of what two ounces translates to by volume. So what did we do? We would retrieve the manager on duty and allow them to handle the resolution. Sometimes the dish was comped, sometimes it wasn't. One time, in 11 months, there was a fit from one customer who showed his peach so badly that he was told to pay the bill and not return, to the extreme embarrassment of his date. Eventually, the dish was retired a year after I moved on. I'm not surprised, but it was damn tasty regardless. Story 42. I'm at waitress and here's my short one. Was serving this young couple and came to take their orders, yeah? I'm standing here getting the woman's order, repeating it back and making sure it's good. That went fine. Went to take her man's order and stepped to the his side a little bit. This woman looks up at me and says, You really don't need to stand that close to my boyfriend. Now I have a boyfriend, so this is stupid for that reason, but also it's dumb because I'm just your waitress. I'm being nice to you because it's my flipping job, not because I'm interested. Anywho, they eat, leave. And then she comes back and leaves a note written on the table saying, If I ever get that close again, she'll rip my hair out. So yeah, awful couple. Story 43. I had a group date at a fancy steakhouse I worked at in my early 20s. Three guys showed up first and were seated at a round table for six. They sat one seat away from each other, so when the ladies showed up, they paired off and the ladies sat in the empty seats between them. Each guy gave each girl a small box and the girls went to the washroom together. They came back a few minutes later and returned the boxes which sat on the table by the guy's bread plates with a little remote in it. Throughout the meal, a guy would press the button on the remote, and his corresponding date would squirm and giggle. It happened when I was taking an order, doing a table-side Caesar salad, mising them, pretty much whenever I was at the table. Yep, remote control vibrators during dinner, during a group date, and every god oh no time I was at the table. Another time when two older couples were on a double date. The two guys sat beside each other and just watched censored photos the whole time on their cell phones while their wives caught up. Story 44. I'm not a waiter, but one time my brother and I ordered a pizza and a couple huge peach mugs of beer, and we sat outside at this place. Before we even get our pizza, a couple sits at the table next to us, which is so close we could even hear them when they would get wicked quiet, and they start respectfully breaking up and planning to move out and stuff, but she was totally the one breaking up with him. He kept saying, I totally agree. I feel the same way. And like, I just really care about you. And she was stone cold businesslike the whole time while his voice was getting all wiggly. It was hilariously lacking passion. I kind of had to fight laughing. 
The best part is that for some reason, and I bet it's cause the boyfriend thought it was going to be a longer meeting than it was, they ordered a whole bucket of beer, like six bottled beers and a bucket full of ice. And they each drank one before deciding they were done talking, and the lady turned to us and asked us if we wanted the rest. TLDR, my brother and I got day drunk off the tears of a lonely man. Story 45. This couple came in on Valentine's Day. I recognize the woman from the gym. She basically yells at him on the phone the whole time. Kind of crazy. Anyway, we have little paper table tents that host puts on the table. One of them must have wrote a guest number down quick on it and not realized it. The woman sees the number and starts freaking out about it, yelling at him, we're just watching this all unfold. The server took a drink and app order. She continues to berate him. Drinks come. She's still yelling at him, calling him a cheater, worker, all those expletives. Then all of a sudden he just gets up and leaves. She is just staring off dumbfounded. Server places the app down on the table. She stares off into space for a good five minutes and the she gets up and leaves. I hope that man she was with is still alive. Story 46. So this was a few years ago when I was still in college. I tended bar for some time and we had this one girl come in and sit down. She ordered a drink and we talked to her and apparently she was waiting on her date to arrive. Now it's important to know that it was a very casual place and she was very much so dressed up. She was also strange. Well, one drink later, her date hasn't showed up. Two drinks later, same thing. Three drinks later, she just goes ahead and orders food. By the time she finished her fourth drink, it's obvious that she is getting stood up and is starting to get drunk to cover her problems. It's worth noting that we did end up trying to keep her spirits up, but she finished her night off with a double Long Island iced tea. Don't know what's in that drink? Vodka, rum, gin and tequila. With mixers, of course. She was officially toast at this point and fell asleep at our bar. At one point, she stumbled to the bathroom and puked and came back to sleep at the bar. To be fair, it's our fault that we overserved here. But man, it was a hot, awkward mess the whole time she kept saying how he must be running behind or something. Slowly watching her get more and more depressed with every drink waiting for him. I hope she found a good person to be with. Story 47. I've seen multiple Tinder first dates turn into disasters. Girls walking out on guys and vice versa. Most awkward couple dates are hands down Valentine's Day. You would be absolutely shocked by how many couples don't make reservations. Arrive at the restaurant dressed up for the occasion, only to not have a reservation, then the panic sets in and the arguing starts. I've seen dozens of presumably serious relationships end on sidewalks outside of restaurants over this. Needless to say, Valentine's Day will always be my favorite day of the year being a waiter. My personal most awkward waiter couple experience is I went on an occupied date with a girl in Philadelphia that didn't go well then two years later. I waited on her and a guy, they were on a first date, while working in NY. It was incredibly bizarre and awkward. 